the area around Pahala, um, sometimes we call it the, the deep lower southwest rift of, of mm -hmm. Kilauea, um, is a zone that has very deep seismicity occurring between 30 to 40 plus kilometers down. It's a long um, time. Yeah, and it, it's as long as we've been monitoring earthquakes on the island, we've been seeing them there. Um, in fact, some of the earliest observations of tremor, harmonic tremor that we're, we're characterizing in the literature came from this area as well, going back some 40, 50 years. Um, and yeah, so the area, you can see it circled there, um, is what we're talking about. It, it starts near the, the town of Pahala and also goes offshore um, quite a bit. But this is distinct from Loihi, so Loihi is, is even more to the south. So we can, mm. we can tell the earthquakes here versus Loihi earthquakes. You mentioned harmonic tremor. Could you explain to our audience a little bit more about what harmonic tremor is and how it's different from other earthquakes? Sure. So uh, a, a normal earthquake that we experience most commonly is due to slip along a fault. So you have some stress building up, you have a, a crack underground that develops, and then the, the stress can't, can't be supported by that rock anymore, and it moves. So mm -hmm. you know, it's this brittle failure, basically you're breaking the rock. Uh, harmonic tremor and other types of volcanic seismicity are due to fluid movement. So in the case of tremor, it means that the fluid is resonating inside some kind of crack or conduit underground. Mm -hmm. And uh, depending on the size of that conduit and, and the characteristics of that fluid and what's driving that, uh, how much water is there, whether it's water or magma or what have you, or gases, mm -hmm. the, the period will be different. So that the, the way that fluctuates. And uh, so here's, a, oh, here's, here's an image here showing some examples of volcanic seismicity, um, which you, know, you can see the waveforms or the, the wiggles on the on the page here look a little different, but they're they're all due to resonance of fluids underground in some way. Um, so LP stands for a long period. That's a type of seismicity we see in, in under the volcanoes. Uh, and you have tremor, which can be uh, deep or shallow. Um, and there's an example of, of deep tremor under the the southwest rift, rift region that we were talking about. And there's a comparison to a deep earthquake at the bottom, which is. Um, Right here, which is uh, has more of a what we call impulsive or sharp onset, and it, you can see S waves as well. Um, whereas you don't see that with tremor. With tremor, it just starts gradually. You can see it has a cigar shape here as well. Sometimes that's the characteristic shape, and it, and it fades back down. Oh, fantastic! And when I've looked at the online maps that you guys have, and mm -hmm. sometimes you actually can see the difference in how these things are plotted. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, so um, online, when we, when, we character, when we post the earthquakes online, we, we can give it a, a, a type, it's a category mm -hmm. we tag for the earthquakes. And so we can tag them as, as, as earthquakes or as LP, long period events, or as tremor events. And depending on that, it may show up as a different symbol. And if you click them, you can find the waveform or the actual data, and you can, of course, see this yourself in the data. Try to match one of these patterns that you see here with, yeah. with what's online. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So this is an area that has lots of different kinds of earthquakes. Yeah. What we're looking at here is, is a map from a, a publication that came out in 2015, uh, which explored earthquakes in this area of different types and uh, basically ran a sophisticated computer algorithm through the, through the continuous data and, and found many different types of earthquakes. And, and so what we're looking at here, as you can see, uh, they circled some zones. The, the red zone here is where some of the deeper tremor is happening. Um, and then plotted on top of that, you can see on the right side are, are earthquakes themselves. Um, mm -hmm. And and then it, they identified another zone up here in the north and talked about how this might connect up to, to Kilauea. Um, the interpretation um, from this and other papers is that there's a uh, potentially an area of, of melt down there where the, perhaps a hot spot comes underneath Hawaii, um, heats up the, the rock down there, creates some kind of partial melt, and s through some mechanism feeds the volcanoes, you know, Kilauea, Mauna Loa, and Loihi potentially. But, and so in that zone, there's going to be some fluid and some cracks, and it's going to resonate from time to time and make the tremor but it also breaks the rock. So we get earthquakes as well, perhaps on the, on the edges of that. The top is where we've interpreted it mostly, but it could be anywhere on the edges. And um, that's creating the, the brittle failure or the breaking that leads to earthquakes as well. And, um, in fact, if you look over um, on this other screen, if you, if you can switch it, this, this screen is showing uh, that same zone and uh, the earthquakes now are colored different. They're blue and purple, and that means they're deep. And it's the same colors that are on the HBO website, by the way. And you can see where they, they cluster 
quite densely onshore but also offshore and these are for the most part actual earthquakes um, mm -hmm. due to breaking of the rock um, some of there is tremor that that is mixed in there sometimes but they tend to be discrete events that happen for minutes to hours and then they're then they're over and they ha you know, happen somewhat sporadically um, not not too often um, but on the so that's the, the right side of this figure here on the on the left side it's a pretty interesting plot too if you the top one shows if you just a finger my finger oh yeah low tech here so there's there we go so if you go 50 years back in time this is 1970 to now this is showing the number of earthquakes per year so you can see these small little blue blip here in 1970 you know 100 earthquakes per year or so pretty low levels for a long time started to pick up in the 2000s and then there was a quite a big swarm in 2005 big for the time which um, tailed off a little bit but really heralded I think uh, an increase in this seismicity in this region because you can see it started to ramp up and then a, a even larger swarm happened in 15 which has led to this situation we're in today uh, it's kept us busy analyzing all these earthquakes so it's, it's multiplied the workload quite a bit for right. us so that bottom plot on the left is actually blown up Yes. From the top one, yeah. Correct. The, the blown up plot on the bottom is zooming in on the last uh, five years. And you can see that, that, that swarm that happened in October of 15 and then other uh, increases and decreases have happened since then. And then a really dramatic increase recently in 2019, which is where we are right now. And the upper plot goes all the way back to 1970, is that correct? Yes. And so is it is it only because of the change in our measuring of the earthquakes that we see such a big increase? recent time or is there something else going on? That's a valid question. So we have better instruments now, we have more instruments now, we, we uh, can detect more than we could in the past and there probably is some of that bias going on but the, the major upgrade that happened to HVO's instrumentation happened around 2011 or so mm -hmm. and so if, if that were the main culprit I would expect to see a big jump around 2011 and you really just don't see that. Um, also when I, when I made these plots I I filtered out the smallest earthquakes. So really the, the more modern instrumentation allows us to have to see the smaller and smaller seismicity. Um, the big stuff we could see anyway, even with the old instruments. So so this is, I think, is a real effect. Awesome, that's really yeah. fascinating. Yeah. And we talked about fluid moving through here. Mm -hmm. Presumably some of that fluid is, is the magma itself. Mm -hmm. Where is it going from here? Do we know? We, we don't know for sure. There are some uh, authors, uh, Klein, uh, Wright, Koyanagi, and others in the past have looked at this, um, and they've, they've looked at trends that show the seismicity um, tracing out a path perhaps toward the Kilauea summit. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it's tenuous way it may move to the Southwest Rift region, but, but there are, is some suggestion that, that it does go there. And then there's also some suggestion that it may go to Mauna Loa as well. So they've looked at that and seen some shallowing in the depths of the earthquakes toward Mauna Loa, um, but quickly you don't that the view gets obscured. We don't know what's in between. You can't connect the dots, and um, but it makes sense that perhaps it's connected to both. Right, that's really fascinating. So it could be going possibly either way or both at the same time. Possibly, and we just have to wait and see what we see, right? Right, and there's a lot of open questions because geochemically speaking, the the rocks that come out of Kilauea and the rocks that come out of Mauna Loa are different. There's some uh, isotopic signatures in those rocks. That, that tell you that the source magma is different for them. Mm -hmm. So if this indeed were a single source, well, how does that happen? What happens to the magma on the way to change it? Right, got really interesting questions there. Yeah. So um, when we look at this, this plot, I mean, we're showing like this blob area and these earthquakes are more or less at the same depth. Does this mean that this is kind of a, a flattish area that, that the magma is moving through? Do we know anything about that? Or is it just too hard to tell? Well, um, this, this one paper here from, from where this figure came is actually plot some of those out. They, they do a relocation on them and they notice that it, it does form a flat, uh, almost like a table-like feature which goes toward the east, pointing towards Kilauea. Uh, and so the, the interpretation was there may be some, some zone of weakness there that allows this, this activity to go along that, that trend. So. Um, Th that's about all we know. It's it's deep. It's hard to, to to measure. We, the fact that it's on the coast and offshore as well is hard. Makes it doubly hard to measure because right. we don't have ocean bottom seismometers, sadly. So we can't surround it with our instruments like you like you should do to locate them well to get the best accuracy. Right. That's right. Yeah, well, that's fascinating. So one question that we often get is why are there earthquakes between Pahala and the summit when we see yeah. 
this pattern there? Yeah, that, that, that's a very good question. We don't know. This is why it's fun to be in science because you, you, you're a detective figuring things out and we just don't know. There have been times, of course, in the past when the Southwest Rift, the shallower region, the Southwest Rift have been more active. It's mm -hmm. erupted, of course, in, in recent decades, in, in uh, 1974, for example. But, but how the, the, that connects down to this region is a, is a mystery, really. Maybe one, you know, is it fair to say that the conduit of magma to Kilauea is not the pipe that many people imagine? Clearly, we talked about one area that may be flatter, and other areas we have no idea what it looks like. And mm -hmm. other areas, it's more like a pipe. It's got to be pretty complex, huh? Yeah, it's definitely not a pipe. If, if anything, it's a complex network of, of cracks, you know, dikes and sills is, is what we call them, depending on if they're horizontal or, or vertical. And, uh, and this weaves its way through all the layers to get to the surface. Well, it's fascinating how much we really don't know, even yeah. on what I consider one of the most best study volcanoes on the entire planet. Huh? That's right. And, and the more earthquakes that happen, the more we learn, because the earthquakes uh, send their seismic waves through the rock. And when we record those at the other end at our stations, we, we measure not only the earthquake, but also the properties of the rock in between. Mm. And so um, researchers look at that and they can actually back out the material properties of the rock and things like uh, how hot it might be and its, its, uh, its makeup, what, what type of rock it is. And through studies like this, um, and known as tomography, measuring the velocity changes underground, you can start to understand what's going on down there. And you know, there have been studies like that in Hawaii, uh, many, many of which, but there need to be more. Oh, that's fascinating. We'll, wait, we'll eagerly await the next conclusions as they come up.